Sync by Omega is a Windows-compatible device configuration and management software platform for compatible Omega smart devices. In this video series, we will cover sync installation, smart device discovery, input configuration, alarm settings, output configuration, device settings, and capturing data. So let's get started. Part 1. Sync Installation If you haven't already downloaded and installed Sync, we've provided a link in the description, or you can go to Omega.com and in the search bar type in Sync Software, and that will bring you to the Sync product page where you can download it from there. Once Sync is downloaded and the zip file expanded, click the Sync Installer file and follow the prompts. Once Sync is installed, a shortcut icon will appear on your desktop. You can click that to launch Sync. Part 2. Smart Device Discovery When you launch Sync for the first time, you'll be greeted by this rather blank looking screen. But as soon as you connect a smart device to a USB port on your PC, Sync will auto-detect it and the Configure Device window will be populated. Your window may appear differently depending on which device you're connecting. If Sync does not detect your device, click this big plus sign in the upper left corner of the screen. That's the Add Device button, which will open the Add Device wizard. First, it'll tell you to make sure your device is connected. It is. So I'll click Next. Then select the device family. We're connecting a smart probe, so I'll click End Device slash Probe. Then click Next. Then select the communication interface. We're connecting via USB to COM port 9. Then click Finish, and there's our device in the list of devices on the upper left. For each connected device, the assigned name and the product name will be displayed here. For this video, we're using an Omega Layer N SP003 Smart Temperature, Humidity, and Barometric Pressure Sensor. Just to the right of the Add Device button is the Delete Device button, and next to that is the System Settings button, where we can customize our device's behaviors, display units, and COM ports. Next to that is the Reconnect button, and then the Auto Scan Device Settings button, where you can add or remove devices from the list of devices that you wish Sync to auto scan for. Below the list of devices is the Device Attributes list, showing device ID, core and firmware versions, manufacturer and calibration date, operating hours, COM port, IP address, as well as voltage and operating temperature. All the metadata needed to trace where your measurements came from and what was the overall health of the sensor at the time of measurement. Part 3. Input Configuration The configuration of connected devices takes place in the configuration panel here to the right of the screen. And since we're already in the Inputs tab, let's start here with the Type drop-down. The Type drop-down allows you to choose the mix of sensor types that you want to use. Since our device measures temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and digital I.O., we've got a mix of T, H, B, and D I.O. But if your application only requires, say, temperature and humidity, you can choose only those inputs for your configuration. But we'll leave all the inputs in our mix for now. If I click on each of the device inputs, you'll notice that the parameters in the configuration window will change depending on the type of input. Be sure to check the user's manual for your device to set them properly. Part 4. Alarm Settings One of the common attributes to all sensors is the ability to set an alarm. So let's set an alarm on our temperature input by clicking the Alarm icon, which opens the Define Alarm dialog box. Here, we can set an alarm based on a specific threshold. Click the drop-down here and we can set an alarm that's triggered when the measurement goes either above or below threshold, outside of a specific range, or within a specific range. We'll go with above a threshold of 22 degrees Celsius for 3 seconds. But when the alarm's been triggered, what do we want Sync to do about it? Under Action, we can choose whether to transmit a notification to the host in a wireless application, or select Do Not Notify if the sensor is connected locally. And if your sensor has programmable outputs, we can set the alarm to turn on a specific output. I'll set it to turn on output zero. You can also set it so that when the alarm is triggered, it will change the rate at which the data is sampled. For example, from every hour to every minute. But we'll leave this at the do not change setting for now. And under recovery, you can tell Sync what to do once the alarm state has passed. In the drop-down, choose Clear Alarm if you want it to just go away, or Latch Alarm if you want someone to perform a manual operation to clear the alarm. And Duration tells the system how long you want the alarm condition to be over before the alarm is cleared. I'll set it to 2 seconds before it clears the alarm. Click Save and our alarm settings are activated. And now when the temperature spikes above 22 degrees Celsius, you can see input 0 turns red, and stays red until the temperature normalizes for 2 seconds, and then the alarm is cleared. Part 5. Output Configuration To configure the outputs of a device, we'll select the Outputs tab, 
and to the right of the screen you'll see the output configuration panel. And under device output range type, open the type dropdown and you can choose between on, off, or PWM alarms. Typically, we'll be setting this to on off, which means, for example, the output can trigger a heater to switch off at a high temperature and switch back on at a lower temperature. We can see from the output configuration panel that output zero is already in use. But if we go to output one here to the left of the panel and click on the settings for the on off control button here, this will open the define on off control panel. Since our device can measure humidity, we'll set the input to input one with a set point of 75% and we'll leave the control actions at reverse, meaning the output will be on until the humidity hits 75%, and we'll leave the dead band at zero, and click Save. Now you'll notice at the bottom right of the screen, output one is on, and when the humidity passes 75%, output one switches off, and when the humidity drops below 75%, output one will switch back on. Part six, device settings. Click the Device Settings tab, and we can configure the different parameters associated with whichever device in our system that you have selected. So, depending on which device you're using, the parameters may look different from what we're showing here. Click on Update Current Time, and you can set the device to the current time, and moving forward, all time stamping from your device will be based on this start time. The default setting for user hours is the time from when your device was manufactured and calibrated. Click the Rename Device button if you wish to do so. That will open this dialog box where you can enter a new device name of your choosing. I'll call this Control Room and click OK, and now you can see the device name in the upper left has changed to Control Room. Factory Reset will reset your device back to its default settings. Just be aware that includes not just the settings here in this window, but all settings including input settings such as alarms, output settings, everything. So be sure you really want to start over before selecting that. To avoid losing all of your device settings, click on Save Configuration, and you can save a file to your computer with all of your current device settings. And to load that file, Load Configuration allows you to load a previously saved configuration from your computer. And if you wish to set a password for a smart probe, click Set Passwords and a Security Settings dialog box will open. I'm not going to set one now, so I'll leave it blank. Part 7. Capturing Data so now let's move on to the Capture Data interface. I'll click on the Capture Data menu tab at the upper right side of the screen. Here you can see a chart that displays real-time data from connected devices. And if I scroll down, we can see charts for all of our inputs. Basically, this is where Sync is performing real-time logging. Keep in mind though, that a smart probe like the SP003 that we're using here will continue to log data even when it's not connected to Sync, as long as it's getting power. So let's just say our smart probe lost communication for a period of time. Using Sync, we can extract that missing data from the sensor's built-in memory. Once I click the Extract Data button, these data extraction tabs will appear, where we can choose all data, or a range of data, clear log data, or cancel. I'll choose Extract All Data. And now we're looking at data from the memory of our smart probe, instead of real-time data. We can also take that data and save it to a CSV file by clicking the little floppy disk icon here. And clicking this red box here brings us back to our live real-time logging chart. So there you have it. We've covered the key features of Sync software. If you want to find out more about how Sync can help you with your application, contact one of our engineering experts at Omega.com.